Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, since I got my 71 Porsche 911 T, I've been redoing it and looking for various uh, ways to upgrade it and see what's out there. You know, you've met people like Magnus, and uh, the cool thing about it is there was a time when these cars weren't worth anything. You could pick them up at three or 400 bucks. I can remember guys buying 911s in junkyards and taking the engine out and putting them in VW buses and stuff like that. But now they've become so valuable which is bad news if you're trying to buy one. The good news is it means almost every one of them can be saved. In fact, there's a whole cottage industry now in just bringing back classic air-cooled 911s. And uh, another guy leading this charge is Marlon Goldberg. Marlon, come on in. How you doing, buddy? Hi, Jack. How are you? Good. He's, he's got a shop. It's called what, LA Workshop 5001? Yes. OK. Uh, and that's the website as well? Uh, the website is workshop5001.com. Okay. Now, you started out with Singer. You all know the Singer Porsches. Those have become uh, uh, pretty legendary in the last couple of years. You worked there for years. Now you're off on your own doing Porsches, right? Correct. Cool, yeah. cool. And you guys aren't throwing rocks at each other, right? Everybody no. gets along. <laughs> okay. No. Just so you know how it is. You know how it is. So tell us what we have here. Tell us how, what these cars started out as and what they've become. Let's, let's start right. with this one. Uh, this is a 1973 uh, 911T okay. that came to us, and it was already a little bit of a hot rod. It had a 3.2 uh, motor from a 1986 911. Now, the 911T, for those who don't know, was pretty much the base model, wasn't it, just right. about? Yeah. yeah. That was, if you, if you wanted a Porsche, that was the least expensive, 125 horse. Right. Just a nice driving car. Right. So, and that, so this, this car, probably around 79 or 80, might have been what? Fifteen hundred dollars, something yeah. like that. Yeah, and this was one that had lived a little bit of a hard life yeah. and had had color changes right. and some bad modifications, and it, you know, it needed a, a new life. At this point, with the prices getting so high, have you ever found the 911 is not worth saving? There are some that there's really nothing left. You have fire damage or something. Yeah, I, but if it's one that's historically significant in one way or another, people will go through you know greater lengths to sure. to make it right again. Uh, but you know, typically the cars that we use for our full hot rod builds are ones that need to be reborn and right. saved in a way. Now this one's a hot rod. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. This one is still a hot rod, but more of a road car. Correct. Right. I'm meant yeah. to be driven, meant to be used every. That's right. what I love about Porsche. You know, I always see Porsche guys brag about how many miles they have in their car. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, Italian exotic guys brag about how few miles they have in their car. So that, that right. sort of makes it the difference. Right. Uh, so wh what did you have to do? Did you have to literally tear this thing completely apart? Was it pretty good? Uh, this was torn down to a bare tub. Okay. So literally every nut and bolt off the car, okay. um, and it was media blasted, and then it was put on our select bench, uh, which is the uh, basically a, a dedicated fixture system similar to a frame straightening bench. Right. So that you bolt on uh, like an bolt, alignment tape. Yeah. yeah, and uh, that you immediately when you put it on you know if the car is straight or not. And this car needed a little bit of structural repair. It was a little bit tweaked out in the back, so we put it on, we make all our structural repairs, and uh, we also, at that point, do some of our sport purpose modifications, which are stitch welding, we can do roll cages. Uh, and how hard is it to straighten, although it's not technically a chassis, mm -hmm. but when one is tweaked, how hard, is, is that just really tricky, is that really it varies. Specialized work, you know? Yeah, it's uh, it's a little tricky. I mean, yeah. certain parts of the car are easier to repair than others, sure. and because a, a 911 has so many fixture points compared to like an earlier 356, you're able to, and you can buy a lot of the parts or most of the parts. You can cut apart uh, certain parts of the car. You fixture the new parts and you weld it all back together. What year is most desirable for you when you hear about somebody's got a Porsche they want something done? Uh, most desirable, what, be 69, 73, that era? Is that what you like? I think that's what a lot of people lean towards. Yeah. 69 were the, the long wheelbase cars, right. and, uh, and then through 73, that was the end of the, the long hoods. Right. A lot of people kind of uh, geek out for 72s, because those were the one year with the external oil door, which oh, right. 
which yeah. people thought was gas. And yeah, and yeah. so they it, kind of did away with it. But it was yeah. interesting. It moved the oil tank forward. Right. And it, it wasn't until the 964s that they later did that again. And uh, they had a, the 915 gearbox, which uh, was a little bit improved from the 901. So 72, 73. To me, if you want a long hood car, those are the two ideal years for, for a donor car. Now, a quick question to me, rather than, there are no Fuchs wheels on this one. Right. Are these lighter than the Fuchs wheels? Are they the no. same way? Uh, these are a steel wheel, and uh, a lot of people sort of look at these and they think it's the Space Saver Spare, which is very similar. Right. Uh, but I noticed a lot of early... Uh, 911 rally cars would run this and we really the goal with this car was to build something totally understated like a wolf in sheep's clothing and we wanted really no bling we wanted it to gotcha. have this sort of monotone look let me that. ask you a question what's the advantage of the longer thread as opposed to being you know a, you know a short stud with a nut on it why What's the, At this is there a reason point, that is that way? I think uh, from maybe early days of racing, throwing it on there and having it uh, be easier to catch the studs and hold in place right. while you put the nuts. And now it's become more of a design thing than, okay. than anything else. No, I was always curious about that. Because, you know, like Mercedes, they used to make that, um, that knockoff wheel. What was it called? The uh, Rudge knockoff. Rudge, the Rudge yeah. wheel. All right. And I was almost going to get a set for mine, but then I found out the Rudge wheel was actually heavier than the stock wheel. Yeah. So why would I, why would I do that? Right. You know. So right. that's why right. when I see the Fook wheel and I see that, I always wonder. Yeah. Uh, I like to look at that more. It looks more finished to me. Uh -huh. But I always wonder why that was. Okay. And obviously, this car is almost the complete absence of chrome, isn't it? There's no chrome at all on it. That's a design choice. Yes. Well, this is actually a finish called uh, crystallite chrome. Oh, so it is. It, it looks almost like brushed aluminum. Well, a lot of people think it's brushed. It, we were going for kind of a frosted look. So right. it's, it's nickel with chrome over it because it'll hold up a lot better and more usable than uh, just a nickel finish. And I love the interior, the plaid on the seat. That looks kind of good. That's great. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And I love a non-airbag wheel. It just looks better. I mean, yeah. they've gotten pretty good with airbags. They've gotten smaller. Right. But uh, just the look of that is pretty nice. Now, this engine is what, a 3.4, you said? This is a 3.4, okay. uh, which started life as a 3.2. And it's also twin plugged. It's uh, uh, full MoTeC injection. So it's a modern EFI. So does this have the original dog leg gearbox in it? Or no, it that would have been a 901. Okay. This is the 915. So first is, is up. OK. Yeah. And that's a five speed, obviously. Five speed, correct. Five speed, OK. Yeah. Uh, let's see what other modifications can you tell us about on this one? Uh, well, the biggest thing is that with this car, we've also eliminated the torsion bars okay. suspension. And this is full coil over. Uh, KW made us a three-way motorsport kit, which is kind of what they put on modern Porsche race cars, but adapted for the older chassis. Right. So this car, we really built with the intention of it running around uh, the Malibu canyons and the tighter and twistier the roads are, the, the better this car performs. Now this car originally had air conditioning, but you took it out right. because it was too heavy. What does it weigh? Uh, the air conditioning system itself? Yeah. Or, well, this one had kind of a beefed up aftermarket air conditioning system. Okay. And so I think when we weighed it, it was 70 or 80 pounds. Oh, that much, of, huh? It was okay. a lot of stuff, yeah. Okay, you gotta skip a couple, a lot of lunches to make <laughs> yeah, that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. But okay. the goal with this was to to build something that's just about the driving experience. Right. So no no air condition, no radio. This one does happen to have heat, but other than that, it's just yeah. bare bones. But it's a proper road car. I mean, a lot of times when you drive a race car on the street, it's, mm. it's cammy, it's uncomfortable. Right. You can't reach the speeds on the road that it's meant where, where driving Nirvana actually is. Right. Whereas this is just a proper road car that's just, just fun. Yeah. To take to the camp. Yeah. To me, all the fun happens between 40 and maybe 110. Yeah. We yeah. wanted a balance with this, that yeah. you yeah. could get in it and take a long road trip, but also go in the canyons and rip around and have the performance level you'd expect from, uh, you know, from a modern race car. Does it have a sound system in it? Radio? Yeah. No stereo. No stereo, no nothing. Wow. Nothing. So this yep. is a... Uh, the wow. engine is the uh, is the is uh, the, music. the soundtrack. Yeah, it yeah. works for me. Yeah. Let's pivot over to this one here. This one okay. is what year? 
This is a 1974. 74, okay. And what's kind of interesting, we're sort of lucky that we got to build these back to back, that 73 is the last year of the long hood. Right. 74 was the first year of the short hood. Okay. And uh, you know, most, most people prefer the early car, but the cost of the donors has gone up significantly. Right. So now people are moving to what they call the G-body cars, which okay. were 74 through 89, but had the impact bumpers with the accordions and you know yeah. now now we all like them but for many years no one liked yeah. that look I got so, it I didn't like that look why do you not run the uh, the cover I that's just for me it's just a personal touch that uh, when you saw a lot of the vintage race cars they had that open probably when the car would come in if they needed to do yeah, uh, quick, torsion quick. bar changes uh, to be able right. to extract it but I just liked the look of it being open and uh, actually, some of the guys that, that work with us at our shop, they give me a hard time about it. They yeah. think I should close it off, but That's it's right. just one of those things I personally like, and we, we leave uh, it that way. Is this stock, this jacking point here? Yeah. Or did you add, is that where, I don't remember it being that obvious, or is it me? Well, because a lot of the cars have a extra That's you know, rocker it, panel that That's covers it. The rocker it up. panel covers yeah. that up, okay. And then okay. they would sometimes have even the, like the rubber plugs, so that right, you have to right. pull it off to get in. So that's another kind of exposed design element and because I think a lot of the the just the simple things that people overlooked on these cars that were unique to 911s are special and I want to show them off. And this has the Fuchs, are these stock Fuchs wheels or are they bigger? These are these are a little wider than what would have come on this car. Are originally. they an aftermarket or are they still a Fuchs no, wheel? No, they're a real original uh, Fuchs wheel but there, there were so many variation sizes and offsets over the years yeah. that a lot of uh, a lot of 911s guys have mixed and matched to I guess what get I'm the stance is, right. But this tire and wheel combination was not available in '74, right? Uh, no, the tire was not that. Not, not on a '74 yeah, Carrera. Yeah. Now I'm surprised that you didn't uh, pull the bumper and smooth it out a bit and make it a bit more like you say. Did some people like the big bumpers in the front? Well, one of the things that I, I'm very specific about with our full builds is we don't like the concept of backdating the bodywork. Like we don't want to take a newer 911 and make it look like an old one. I right. want to sort of embrace each car for for what it was because I think there's there's things that are special about sure, each generation. Sure. So if someone starts with a 74, we're going to build this ultimate version of a of a 74. Because this is a track car, but it's also a streetable car. Yes, this was a car that the client wanted a race car. So, but he wanted the original. It's interesting because I mean, you strip out radio and everything else. This just seems like this would be added weight to me. Well, this is actually this is a composite front bumper. Oh, it is. Yeah, that uh, is meant to look like an SCR, SCRS okay. uh, front bumper. So they're actually very light, and we got them. They were made by a company in the UK. And we had to fabricate a whole uh, bracket system to mount them to the chassis uh, in a way that we thought was structurally sound. And we probably I think Harley Davidson and Porsche must be the two most aftermarket parts available companies around. I mean, there's a million things you can get for Harley and for Porsche. Like, just the fact that there's a guy making the composite version of this. I mean, right. how many customers actually want that? I mean, yeah. you know, but that's uh, in the Porsche community, there's so many variations of what different people like. Yeah. Okay, now what's the engine on this? This is taken to what? Uh, this is, we, we took out the original 2.7 and uh, we bought a 3.6 that would have come with a 964 right. and built a 3.8 liter wow. based off of that engine. So a horsepower to this would be about what? Uh, this, when we dyno it, we dyno every motor before it goes in the chassis. Right. And in a 100 degree Fahrenheit dyno cell, this was 339 horsepower. Wow. So in real world, that might be 360. 350-ish, yeah, yeah, okay. at least. Yeah. And the color is great. That's a Porsche blue, isn't it? Uh, well, this is actually... It was supposed to be Mexico blue, but this was painted at our, our partner shop in uh, New York, uh, MMS, uh, and they're the authorized Porsche Collision Center, and now all the new cars are painted with PPG water-based. Okay. And uh, this was originally a single-stage color, so we've tweaked it. It's our own exactly. interpretation. Plus, New York is so far from Mexico, they gonna get, they're not going to get the blue right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's some kind of New York blue. <laughs> some kind of New York. No, it looks great. It's a stunning car.
Yeah. And the significance of having one seat red and one seat black, is there any reason for that? Well, both seats are red. That black seat, it's in there, that's for testing purposes. Oh, I see. And because uh, these seats were, were custom done for the client. Oh, I see. So you took his seat out and you put it in the corner. And right. Okay. We put in a seat that I can fit in. And, okay. and also with it being black, it you know, as our test seat, will show less wear. So. Right, right. And that way we preserve the, the fancy red leather from yeah. the original seat. And the full uh, roll cage as well. Back seat is pulled out. Yeah, this, this cage is actually welded in in this car. And we've done it sort of as a club sport cage. It's, it doesn't have door bars. It doesn't have a bar under the dash. Or so. Yeah, so it's... All sound deadening removed as well? Uh, well, everything was removed because this was also a, a media blasted bare tub. But what we've done is strategically placed uh, it's basically like fancy dynamat that will absorb some of the bad noise. So gotcha. we wanted it to still sound like a race car, but we didn't want it to be buzzy and tinny. So it sort of deadens the metal and uh, and so you did you get the same noise. thing here with your, with uh, not, what'd you call it, this kind of chrome? Crystallite chrome. Crystallite chrome, okay. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. And this is the same finish. And which of these two is your favorite to drive? Uh, the gray car is actually. It's my, actually your uh, favorite. It's yeah. my favorite, okay. yeah. And you build in the run on pump gas, correct? Uh, these cars are both currently calibrated for California 91. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all you can get here in California 91. It's terrible. Well, you can buy race gas. You can have it delivered yeah. to you. But it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's tough yeah. to get, and it's very expensive. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. pain. It's a pain. Well, beautiful. And I know she kept the glass rather than go with some sort of plexiglass. Yeah, it's no, we've, we've kept the glass. And, you know, one of our... Are things for restoration we don't want to be wasteful if we have original glass that's in decent shape we want to reuse it right and part of it is if you look at all the the old logos on the glass it's smaller than on the newer stuff so right. people who are really kind of Porsche geeks they see that and they they appreciate uh, the kind of preservation aspect right right yeah but boy it's nicely done it's really nicely done thank you cool which one are we gonna drive this one Whichever you like. Cool. Let's do it. Got some power in there. Yeah, I have. Now, you don't just do total. I mean, you do service work, too, don't you, on regular Porsches? Yeah, we do regular service work. We do medium size and small size yeah. projects, so building these is just part of what we do. I sort of, I sort of joke sometimes with clients that these are our creative outlet. Yeah. Everything else is by the book, the way Porsche did it, or we'll do the sort of kind of halfway hot runs, but this is whatever we want. But it rides very nice. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think you put race suspension in a car and it's automatically uncomfortable. But right. The reality is most of the race suspensions that are made for the old 911s are meant as like rally suspensions. So right. It's about absorbing bumps and potholes and maintaining contact patch, you know, at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Or whatever speed you'd be doing when you're racing. Freeways here get a little, little, little too much traffic here. Let's find a nice road and get off the beaten path, but as a highway cruiser, it goes pretty good. What steering box is this? Totally standard. It is totally it's stock. The original rack just rebuilt. Okay. I like this gearbox. What did you say about the guy, the company that makes this uh, shifter? The, the shift mechanism is made by a company called Wevo. And then this box was assembled by uh, Bobby Singh, who runs our partner shop in New York. He's kind of a, a gearbox guru, so uh, so he did this box. Are these the stock gears and everything in here, or they've they been rebuilt as well? Uh, this uh, Bobby came up with the ratios. It's yeah. its own recipe. But it can take the horsepower, obviously. Right. Well, the biggest thing for that was the cooling. That's why we decided to run the pump. Yeah. and the external cooler is that we figured would really prolong the lifespan of... Uh, what kind of gearbox temperatures do you hit when you're pushing a car like this hard? Um, probably close to 200, maybe okay. a little more. 
I think you know for street use, you're you're never really yeah. approaching the outer limits of what it's capable of. Sorry. game fairly late. You know, when you grow up as a kid and a Porsche with 80 horsepower was $4,000 and a Corvette with 425 horsepower was $4,500. Well, I mean, why would you even get, you know, right. I mean, I had to really grow up to appreciate a Lotus Elan and what it represented in terms of, of handling. There's a little four-cylinder. How could that be better than a big honking V8, you know? But as you get older, you go, oh, now you appreciate it. Right. I always appreciate how much abuse Porsches could take. Yeah. Brakes are really nice, aren't they? obviously take a little bit of effort because there's no assist yeah but you know once you get some temperature into them and you get the feel for but it's very progressive I know exactly where it's gonna go I mean I put my foot in and just fly the pressure necessary you know it doesn't it doesn't sink on you or anything like that boy this thing's a lot of fun I'm not even a tenth of what it can do here. Yeah. But he just feel it. It just wants to run. The thing I like best is just the pure mechanical feel of everything. Yeah. Everything sort of clicks in. You 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 can tell as it just as you, it, as you go through the gears to feel like you're going fast even when you're not going that fast. Right. I mean yeah. that's the whole fun. I mean as much as I like some of the modern supercars, you've got to be going well over 100 miles an hour. To get any sense of what? Oh, you know. Yeah, they're too insulated. Yeah, it's... yeah. The temperature is barely warm. Yeah, this thing operates very efficiently. The cooler fan hasn't even gone on. You yeah. can turn them on manually. Yeah. But you'll see one of the green lights will come on when the oil cooler fans yeah. start running. Which yeah, that's is... great. That's a yeah. great trick, isn't it? Yeah. Wonderful guy this is. Nothing breaks, nothing overheats, feels tight, feels together. It's got way more power than it needs. Marlon, nice job, my friend. Thank and you and good luck with your uh, Porsche business. As he Thank said, you. you know, it's not all high end restorations. They uh, do regular work and tune up work, and maybe I'll see what's wrong with my 911. Or see what we can do. Maybe I get a deal. I'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> right, we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>